Now, as I mentioned, curriculum changes. Throughout your career, you're going to see various changes around curriculum. And it's useful to have a little bit of an understanding about the processes involved in curriculum changes. The first need, thing you need to understand is that there are going to be time lags. Um, we can't just have a curriculum change and everything changes immediately, particularly on a large scale. So there are four different dimensions of time lags in relation to curriculum. There's a recognition time lag, recognizing that there's actually a need to change. So it may be, say, artificial intelligence. That's uh, a fair bit of recognition happening at the moment to try to convince people that there needs to be a change to the digital technologies curriculum to incorporate aspects of artificial intelligence. So there's a process going through at the moment to recognize that there may be a need for a change in relation to that. Then there'll be a decision-making lag. So once there is a recognition, there needs to be a decision process to enact a change. And that can take quite a while, particularly if we're talking about the national curriculum, where all the states and territories have to agree to that. Then there'll be an implementation lag, where even once we've decided that we do need to change, there takes quite a bit of time to make that change. And indeed, in Australia, it generally takes us around about six years to implement a change to a curriculum. And then finally, there is a resistance to change. Teachers and education as a whole is inherently conservative. And teachers have seen a lot of changes and change happens all the time. And they do tend to be relatively resistant to changes. Otherwise, things would be changing all the time and it'd be chaos. So that's an aspect that we're going through at the moment still with the Australian curriculum, where not all states and territories have fully implemented the change. And the changes as a result of the um, moving from version 6.4 to version 9 will take some time as well. So there are various processes going in place at the moment to prepare schools and um, school systems to incorporate the changes. And I've given you some details about the timeframes that we are seeing around the implementation of the reforms to the Australian curriculum and when we should see the full implementation of the technologies learning area around 2026. So finally, we just need to understand that as a professional educator, you should be trying to understand what might be coming up in terms of changes, particularly around digital technologies, which change more rapidly than most other areas. But staying abreast of changes in technologies will help you understand about what needs to be incorporated into the curriculum um, as things progress. So artificial intelligence is an obvious one at the moment. There's also virtual reality and augmented reality, which is sort of also on the horizon, and also game-based learning. Um, and these are things we'll be discussing throughout the course. But you need to understand that as a professional educator, you have a responsibility to keep an eye out for these changes. You won't be coming back to university to learn about how these things happen, unless you do a master's and things like that. But you'll be responsible for your own learning. And so you need to be remaining aware of what are the major things happening in the world and whether or not they're going to impact upon your curriculum and how and what you teach your students. So again, throughout this course, particularly in our research um, lecture towards the end, we'll be looking at, about this in some more detail. But inherently, we're moving into an aspect of what's called computing plus X, where computing is being associated with other subject areas. So we would look at computing and mathematics and how we can utilize mathematics to, or sorry, computing to improve mathematics. And we might look at computing and science and how we could use data logging and data analysis to improve students learning about science. But we've also got what's called X plus computing, where there's a whole range of new areas of computing that are emerging. 
that are drawing from other areas, such as biological computing, where we're learning about how computing is changing through our understanding of biology and computational processes in relation to, to biology. Or, so there's a range of different ways that computing itself is changing because of other learnings in other areas. Um, our understanding of the brain is impacting upon our understanding of artificial intelligence and how we understand how computing is changing because we're better understanding how intelligence develops by our understanding from biology and neuroscience. So all of that is just to get you thinking about how the world is constantly changing. A big part of technology's education is you preparing your students for this change and for the world as it will be into the future when your students need to engage with solving problems in this new world. So technology's education, both digital and design and technologies, is about preparing your students for the future and a future that you don't necessarily know about yet. So how can we prepare them for that? We can give them a whole series of skills and ways of thinking and looking at the world so that they can solve problems regardless of what those problems turn out to be. That is the purpose of technology's education. That is the curriculum that is framed as part of the technology's learning area, preparing students for an uncertain future. And that's what we're going to be exploring in the rest of this course. So one of the activities that you're to do as part of your log of learning is to submit a paragraph about what you think education might be like in 10 years time. How might it be different? And how might you prepare your students for not just education and how that will be different in 10 years time, because of course that is going to be concerning you, but also the world and how it might be different in 10 years time and how you are going to be preparing your students for that. So write a paragraph about that and submit that as part of your log of learning.